Bojo, Tanzi, it's Catherine at Moonstar Lodge. I'm doing an unusual video and it's going to be for the whole of the moon cycle of Ways the Truth. That starts on Tuesday, March 2nd, happens to be my birthday, and I thought it auspicious to offer us a video that demarks this big changing moon cycle. There's a lot of change this month and uh, during that time we move to um, Aries at the very end of the month with spring equinox. Um, so the, the whole of the month is very, very incredible, an opportunity here. And um, before I go any further, we are directors, Brian and I, at Moonstar Lodge, have been for a very, very long time. I've been doing this work for about 45 years. I've read tarot for almost 50 years. And I have studied and taught Indigenous studies, shamanism as a practitioner, and a wedding officiant. Uh, so we come from a number of perspectives in Indigenous arts, spirituality, and education. It really helps us if you do like this video to give us the thumbs up, to subscribe, that helps even more. And uh, down below we have a link to Coffee, which is uh, a donation site to help us keep going with this. Even as the pandemic comes to an end, things are changing very rapidly and we may not be able to go back to a lot of the uh, traditional activities. Anyway, I wanted to discuss with you for a few moments where we are and let me get my sheets and my uh, picture of the medicine wheel to talk about it. I haven't done a medicine wheel reading in this formal way for a little bit of time and uh, so I'm going to grab my medicine wheel possibly here there we are originally the calendar that was used was the back of a turtle shell and it looked like this so you know we counted the big circles if you want to call them circles or the big spaces on the back of the turtle as the moon cycles and then the 28 uh, individual spikes around the edge were the days it's upside down. Oh. There we go. Perhaps if it wasn't upside down, that would help. There we are. Okay, so here's our turtle shell. And um, this has morphed. Let me get rid of that. Into our medicine wheel. And as you know, we're moving from the white to this point on the wheel where it is spring. So here's the east portion of the wheel and by March 21st we will be here. So we're just beginning the third moon cycle and that third moon cycle we have a wheel of grandmothers. There's the grandmothers and the grandmother that is associated with um, March 2nd this year is Ways the Truth. So I want to speak to you a little bit about Ways the Truth. It's interesting to me that Ways the Truth more or less coincides with Pisces, which is the end of the Western astrology tradition, where they have, you know, 12 uh, houses. Pisces being the last, and Ways the Truth is um, taking a lot of those psychic spiritual associations of Pisces 
and turning them into, um, if I can get the right sheet here, turning them into concepts, uh, concepts of relative truth versus what is real for the world. So, you know, my personal truth may be very different from what is true for other people in the world. So I'm a little disorganized today and that's obvious. So we'll just roll with that because that's all we can do. Cool. Sorry for the break, but I had to find a sheet of paper that um, was magically missing. Uh, but we have launch again. So relative truth, personal truth, universal truth, they're all sometimes very different from each other. When we are in alignment and listening to soul truth, um, listening to ancestors um, guiding us back to soul truth and keeping our moccasins on our journey, uh, we, we get a, a better sense of universality and the connectivity of all of us. We are all one. Um, and that's something with what's going on right now in the Ukraine and um, with recent happenings in other parts of Canada. It's just, it's very important to me that, that we find that balance of the truth. But it all starts with us. It, it, can't, it can't go out into the world without us. So the grandmother weighs the truth whose new moon and we know new moon energy is about beginnings, uh, manifesting. We have the opportunity here uh, to listen to how she asks us to be responsible. So ways the truth is the keeper of equality and the guardian of justice, the fair judge of divine law and the destroyer of deception. She is the mother of truth and the protect protectress of the underdog. She is the mother of self-determination and responsibility. And she teaches us how to find the ability to respond and how to be self-determined. She teaches us how to feed the positive, not the negative, by using divine law. How to use equality with justice, being accountable for our actions and words. How to use personal integrity, ethics, and values to find healing solutions. She teaches us how to accept the truth. So, in a perfect year, weighs the truth, falls between the 13th of February and the 12th of March. The name of this particular third moon cycle is Maple Sugar Comes. The dotum animal is Otter and a clan animal is frog. It could be crane, depending upon the community you come from. We are still in the time of the spirit keeper of white buffalo. The ribbon colors are indigo and silver. The chakra associated with her is the transpersonal. And as you know, we may have one, two, or three aspects of the trans transpersonal chakra open. And that's one of the shamanic traditions we have, is helping people to open all three transpersonal chakras, which is our equivalent of saying that someone is now awake. What are they? Awake to the truth. Um, the plant associated with this grandmother is sacred tobacco and the part of the auric field that's associated with this grandmother is the spirit part, which is the most extreme uh, portion of our auric field. The element is water and um, 
a musical note that would be associated is actually silence or all sound. So you can have any note associated with this grandmother. Um, she can utilize any crystal color ray, any crystal system. So we're talking orthorhombic, monoclinic, triclinic, hexagonal, tetragonal, the cubics, um, trigonal. So any, any of the crystal systems are useful in the third um, moon cycle. The numerological value is 44, and the planet associated with this grandmother is Sirius B. The activating, balancing, and crystals, uh, crystal complements used by this grandmother are anything in the clear, visibly clear, so apophyllite, clear quartz, um, aquamarine, diamond, those kinds of stones could be phrenite, clearer versions of phrenite. Anyway, that's the information on that grandmother. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the dates that are appropriate to this moon cycle. So, the new moon is March 2nd at 12.34, p.m. And the full moon is March 18th at 3.17 a.m. And this moon cycle ends on March 30th. So, uh, I'm just going to check and see if we have any other stellar congruencies here. No. So there are no other stellar congruencies. So I've pulled out a traditional medicine wheel on my medicine wheel cloth. I haven't done the full medicine wheel in a while and I'm using some different cards and we can go to the cards now, Brian. So I'm using the Shaman's Dream. I'm using the original Moonology. I'm using a deck that I don't use very often, Denise Lynn's Native Spirit Oracle, to clarify the tarot. And the tarot I'm using is the Gentle Tarot, made by an Alaskan Indigenous person. Shaman's Dream is doctor, by Dr. Alberto Violdo and his wife, um, and Colette Baron reed I'm using Jamie Sams, who is another Indigenous author. Her Sacred Path and um, Medicine Cards. Medicine to us means a teaching. So this medicine wheel layout is about the medicines, the teaching, um, the healing that the ancestors and guides and teachers can give us. So Unfortunately, it's difficult to follow the medicine wheel, even though it's on the, the cloth. But here's our um, gentle tarot, east, south, west, and north. Here are Judith Pintar's, which I didn't mention. Um, Judith Pintar's deck. I don't have the box for it. Um, so this is the, the Cards of Winds and Changes by Judith. That's the face face card here. The cards of winds and changes and, and I use these as ancestral messages. Denise Linz, she's a Cherokee elder who I very much appreciate and writes has multiple different decks but this native spirit deck is one that we're using to clarify these tarot cards today. The sacred Path cards are here, the dotem cards are here, the astrological cards are here. So with that in mind, let's rock and roll. So as always here, we start in the east and we are starting with the Nine of Thunder, which is the same as the Nine of Swords. 
So this says to me, being as this is a collective reading, that many of us have um, a lot of fears and a lot of anxieties. I know I certainly can have. I'm going through some medical issues. And uh, so this is very much about fears, bad dreams, unsettled sleep, and anxiety. And it's clarified here by the talking stick. This speaks volumes to me. Any of you who've ever been to ceremony here have uh, watched us pass the talking stick. And that is an equalizer of the circle. Every person who um, receives the talking stick has an opportunity to say what's ever on their mind. In this instance, this tells me that if you have the opportunity to speak with others, you're speaking with those you trust enough to, to reflect back at you a truth, to say, have you thought that through? Do you really mean that? Is that really in your best interest? You need people who love you enough to speak the truth. But the talking stick is also about speaking with the ancestors. So we have an opportunity here to transmute the fears and anxieties. The card in the South tells us we are the magician. We are capable of, and in this deck, there are five minor suits. There's um, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. So we are the magician. We are the manifester. We are the one capable. And what we need to do is sit down and do some rituals of offerings. We need to make offerings. This looks like Stonehenge here to me, but this is going to a sacred place and making the ritual that will allow us to connect with the great beyond, the all that is. This card, the Root of Cups, is the same as in a traditional Rider weight. You would call this the Knight. This is a Salmon. Now, cups are emotion, but they're also intuition. And this salmon is returning back to its breeding grounds, not because it has an address and a GPS, but by intuition. It knows instinctually when and how and where it needs to go for its life cycle to carry on. It gathers with its tribe, very much so. You are asked here, this is clarifying this, this card, you are being asked to gather with your tribe. And this is when you would be using the talking stick. So you're gathering with your tribe of uh, third dimensional people, but you're still gathering with your tribe intuitively in spirit. The final card here is very telling. This position in the north this is the Ten of Thunder. This would be like the Ten of Swords, one of the most disliked cards in a deck of tarot. Tens are about endings and new beginnings, and this says to me that we each of us have a responsibility to let go of the things that have bothered us, the old ways of thinking, the old ways of um, trying to resolve situations. It's also about carrying the past and needing to let go the past. The clarifier of this is ancient forest. The tall standing people, the trees, the grandfather trees, grandmother trees, are the ones who carry the knowledge, almost as much knowledge about life on earth as the stone people. So this tells us we need to be getting out into nature. Why? Because the trees wake up. This is the maple sugar comes moon. So there will be patches between the snow of the bare earth. It's time to get out there and put your feet and hands on the earth to lay your tobacco to make the offerings that are being asked of here because you have support. What this says to me is people are feeling alone, like they're abandoned somehow, and they don't know how to do what they need to do, and they don't know how to get where they're going, but they're forgetting their connection with Source and the people that they love and trust. 
This is an old habit. Um, Colette Baron reed refers to this as spiritual narcolepsy. We forget where we're going. We're falling asleep in our proverbial wheel. So what do the ancestors have to say? Well, here's our ancestor cards. And I'm starting here because this is the East and this is how we go around. So this is a card that speaks of transformation. Uh, this is very much about uh, moving from the egg into the bird. We are growing and maturing somehow this spring. It's what's meant to be. What helps us know where we're going is the concept of vision. So this is the vision card. We've got Makwa here, we've got the Tree of Peace, we've got the family, and we've got the light of the sun and the light of the moon illuminating what it is we need. So we've got everything we need around us. We just have to access it. Makwa is waking up. Makwa is a bear, and a bear is the keeper of the medicines and the protector. We are being protected, whether you realize it or not. And here's our little family. This is here and now. So be present to what's growing. Be present. Don't ignore what it is that's evolving around you. Stay present with it. So we've covered these cards. The dotums that we are being offered this week include bird, a bird dotum. We have bear. We have salmon. We also have mouse. Mouse is about waking up and making trails. Uh, mice urinate constantly so that they can continue to follow the trails and be safe. They're also very fastidious about what they do and they're about doing everything they can. So be like mouse and pull your provisions in and make sure you know where the food is and where you can go back. We pulled this card twice. Brian noticed it in the deck from the back of it, but the other version of this card. And this is an open card. This is about accessing the dotum that, that you work with. It may be the dotum of your moon cycle or a dotum that you've walked with for your whole lifetime, your birth dotum, whatever. So you have that to go to. Now, in terms of offerings, and gatherings and making magic the rituals here this ritual is the drum rhythm and internal timing access your drum use that drum to be in the here and now and feel the heartbeat of the earth that's waking up the other ritual here is painted face which represents self-expression sometimes we forget that whatever it is we do whether it's art whether it's sculpture whether it's i'm by art i meant fine art sculpture beadwork whether our art form is baking good food song storytelling whatever it is we need to connect with that expression because that's how the Creator express, expects us to express ourselves and manifest. That's our Creator voice coming forward on the earth. So, two auspicious cards here. I swear this is so awesome. You're very close to achieving your goal. This is the Gibbous Moon card. And this is the Full Moon in Pisces card, which is Balance, Spirituality, and Practicality. So here we go. This is the Full Moon in Pisces card. Out of all the cards in that deck, we get these two. So this is very, very clear message that um, if you can get out of your head and out of your sense of fear, and become the magi uh, magician, you can manifest a lot of change here. Remembering your tribe, remembering to talk, talk it out. Don't hold it alone. Now, the um, 
two cards from Alberto's deck, Dr. Bioldo. Empty well is time to replenish and closing door is completion. So are you this way? Are you full of anxiety and fear because you're exhausted? That's, that's, that's a biggie. Um, it's time to take some time because winter isn't quite over and we can't rush the season. So we need to give ourselves time to uh, replenish. This other card, Closing Door, directly speaks to this. Let go. Close the door on the things which haunt you. It's a completion card. This is a new cycle of thinking. You can switch the camera. And you have a choice. We all have a choice of how we proceed. Do we carry baggage from the past? The biggest tool in weighing the truth is forgiveness. Forgiveness of choices we've made that have kept us out of our loop of truth. Sorry, we had a dog camera moment there. So just know that we have lots of opportunities this month. So it's slow to start because we're still in, in winter in this moon cycle. But it switches to spring. So this is a little bit different for me in the middle of the week. Normally I have a short four or five minute <laughs> offering on Instagram and I reference it, um, you know, on Facebook and the other socials we deal with. But this is different. This needed to be a YouTube video and I will still reference them on all the socials. But it's important to me. Uh, I'm going through a lot of change right now and getting diagnoses for issues which will be with me the rest of my life and change the course of my life. So I have a tremendous opportunity here on my 65th birthday to assess where I'm going and what is my true walk and what can I complete while I still have sight, while I still have some mobility. So I have a lot of choices. So I hope you'll walk with me and continue to enjoy this channel. And uh, that's one of the things I want to do, do a little bit of teaching in the, in the weeks and months to come as the world opens up again post-pandemic. So we thank you, both of us thank you, miigwech, nyawen, and bamapi. Oh.